Today we're making tomato tart with puff pastry recipe and i um, got all the ingredients right here. Got the oven preheated to 400 Fahrenheit and I'm just um, getting some fresh thyme ready. You don't need to use fresh thyme if you don't want. You can also use dried thyme. You can use no thyme. It uh, doesn't really matter. So at the time ready, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, grate some cheese and I'm just doing a microplane, but you can do thicker cheese. You can do store-bought cheese. Um, so that was the Parmesan. I've got the puff pastry defrosting according to the package instructions and I'm gonna cut up um, some tomatoes and you can use any kind of tomatoes you want. These are heirloom. Um, they do have a lot of seeds so I'm laying them out on a paper towel. I'm salting them and I'm gonna try to get any of that extra liquid um, out of there. Um, any of the seeds, if you're having problems, use Roma tomatoes. Those have less water, less seeds. Um, there's some troubleshooting with uh, soggy crust, uh, but the more juice you get out of the tomatoes, the more seeds, the better your crust is gonna be. So I just sliced up an onion and I'm gonna put some olive oil in a skillet and I'm gonna cook this. I'm looking, I set the timer for 15 minutes. This is gonna take 25 minutes total. So olive oil, one onion, salt, cook it around 25 minutes till it's brown, till it's caramelized. Um, and then um, set that aside and let it cool. So that's another troubleshooting thing. You want these ingredients cool, like the onions, before you put it on the tart. Um, taste it there, you know, if it has enough, add some more salt if you like. So again, that's 25 minutes total. These onions are done. I'm going to let them cool and start working with the puff pastry. So puff pastry can come, this is, I'm not endorsing this brand. I actually, um, this isn't the brand I normally use. I normally use the popular one that everybody finds. I actually can't remember it right now. Um, this one is 17 ounces and it's a rectangle. I recommend the 14 ounce one with a square, but it doesn't matter. I'm kind of rolling it out with a pin, but it doesn't matter. And I'm doing it on parchment, kind of rolling up or pinching up the sides. And um, if you're having trouble, you can put a little flour on there, but I generally don't. This is called docking, and it's just like poking holes in the puff pastry so it doesn't rise. So the sides will rise, the middle won't. You're putting in this cooled ingredients. Um, you put a layer of Parmesan down, um, all of the caramelized onions, and then you're going to layer on the tomatoes. And here I thought I had enough tomatoes, but this pastry is a little bit bigger than the other one. The other one's about 14 ounces. Um, Layer in some tomatoes, and then I'm gonna actually grab another tomato because I just want some more tomatoes. So then we're gonna layer on the chev, and um, chev is just goat cheese, and it's crumbled. Uh, you could buy it already crumbled or, or just crumble a log. You could use any cheese you want here. You can use, it's like, also you're gonna put on some extra Parmesan, but you could use uh, cheddar, you could use mozzarella. It's pop pastry, any cheese is gonna taste delicious. Um, Another troubleshooting trick would be if your crust is soggy and you've tried these other things, um, these other suggestions that I've mentioned or that are online, um, you can also pre-bake this crust for about 15 minutes and then add everything onto it. Um, lastly, you would rest this on a wire rack, but for the video, I'm just throwing it on here. And that's it. We're going to garnish it with a little bit of fresh basil. Um, you can slice it or you can just use the leaves. and that is it i believe for this recipe and you can find this tomato tart with puff pastry recipe online at eatsimplefood.com uh, one last thing i like this sort of matte crust uh, but if you did want like a golden brown and shiny crust you would just egg wash that whole um egg wash the whole puff pastry all right enjoy